Thank you very much, Zvonka, and thanks to the, the Slovenian Institute for Adult Education and the EPALE national team. I'm really glad uh, to have to uh, join you today for this important event. Uh, and I hope uh, that there will be a nice first ever for myself uh, live uh, uh, Epale discussion. This is a very nice uh, uh, idea and I'm sure that you will get important results. So let me share my screen. Here it is. As it has been introduced, uh, the topic of my presentation is a uh, territory that has not been really discovered yet, which is the um, encounter uh, between the digital transformation and how this uh, um, impactful change on our society can really uh, provoke a transformative change at society level. I will go through different topics uh, and if you want, uh, you can join me uh, in an interactive way by using the menti.com website. You can see on the top of the slide the instructions, it's very uh, easy. You can also use your mobile phone if you want to follow the presentation on the screen. And once you go to www.menti.com, then you can enter the code that will stay always available on the top of the screen. First of all, let me uh, say something about myself. My name is Alteo Valentini. I am uh, um, cooperating with the central support system of EPALE for two years now as a thematic coordinator in, uh, especially in the field of uh, digital competencies and digital innovation in adult education. First, I became a Nepal ambassador in Italy four years ago, sorry, six years ago. After a very long uh, path that has been always um, uh, characterized by a very strong interest on adult education. I'm a sociologist and uh, since the very beginning, I actually uh, discovered the opportunities of the former lifelong learning program of the European Commission with several projects on uh, empowerment of elderly people. Um, the first one that I want to mention is Cafe in Europe, which was a multilateral Grundtvig project on uh, civil awareness for elderly in Europe. But then the change of my career towards the digital uh, uh, dimension has been represented by a very important project, Vintage, Valorization of Innovative Technology for Aging in Europe, which lasted three years. And it was implemented when uh, uh, actually still uh, we were not really uh, speaking about digital transformation yet. Thanks to these experiences, um, I started my company, uh, which is a training agency called EGINA, European Grants International Academy, focusing mostly on the social impact of digital innovation. The pictures that you see here is probably one of the most important uh, activities we carried out several years ago and it is still ongoing. Uh, it's a workshop between elderly people and young people um, exchanging competencies. From one side, the elderly uh, are bringing pictures from family books, family pictures book. And on the other side, 
you see uh, young people explaining how to digitalize these memories. Well, this was a life-changing experience for me that really represented, allowed me to understand how what we call today basic digital skills can really um, impact on the, uh, not only on the target groups that we are working on, but on the overall uh, society and communities we are um, participating. This laboratory uh, was really much appreciated by the community of Foligno, which is the city where I live. And it turned in a project which is called Post Memory that today is still available. And if you ever walk around Foligno, you will be able to see video mapping um, experiences like the one I'm going to quickly show you with this video, where uh, the most important uh, uh, cultural heritage sites can be uh, explored in augmented reality with history from the past. So how this changing, how this is changing the community? Well, transferring uh, the values from the elderly generation to the uh, new generation, but also uh, making sure that uh, memories uh, will stay available forever for everyone interested to discover them through uh, also uh, touristic interest or uh, uh, academic um, studies. This is just an example that I wanted to start it with uh, to move uh, to the main topic of the presentation digital skills and digital transformation where do we start well first of all uh, you maybe know uh, the digital economy and society index which is the main tool and the main source for statistics on digital transformation uh, elaborated yearly uh, uh, from uh, the european commission and on this first chart you can see how the index is composed. There are five main um, areas, connectivity, human capital, use of internet, integration of digital technologies, and digital public services. And here on this general index, you already see more or less how the European countries stand towards the different areas of inter interest in the field of digital transformation. Um, I usually uh, here um, speak a lot when I present in Italy about the urgency from uh, the Italian government to take several and serious steps to improve the situation. Yes, you can see we are uh, very low in the score. While um, I, I was uh, uh, um, glad to discover that Slovenia stands uh, uh, in the average of the European uh, 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 score of the DESI. But let's try to interact uh, a little bit. What about, in uh, your opinion, is the European country with the highest percentage of citizens with at least basic digital skills? Here you can uh, now, you should now see the question on your screen. And you can, if you want, you can interact by selecting the country that you think has the highest percentage of citizens with at least basic digital skills. I will give you a couple of minutes, one minute. We don't have a lot of time, so. Okay, Lithuania, Romania, Sweden. Estonia.
Thanks for voting. <clears throat> We have 13 votes and a nice representation. Just a couple of seconds more. Finland uh, seems to be the most voted. Let's discover what the DESI uh, index tell us. Well, you were about right with Finland, uh, but the most, the, the highest average uh, is in the Netherlands. And you can also now check uh, where uh, other countries has, have located. Why I wanted to ask you about basic digital skills? Because today, in uh, at the beginning of the digital transformation era, the terminology is changing. And what we meant two, or three, five years ago with basic digital skills, is not longer updated and and we are trying to identify a new interpretation of basic digital skills probably the index will be revised and this uh, um, uh, data here about uh, above basic basic digital skills competence will become uh, relevant for the minimum level of basic digital skills of European citizens. So what does it mean? It means that all the policies, the educational interventions and the projects uh, focused on uh, improving the digital profile of learners, citizens, adults or any other target that you are working on should now reflect on uh, what the society is requiring us to have the minimum set of competencies in order not to be excluded. Another topic that is very important to highlight is the use of the internet. So again, I would like to uh, interact here and guess what is the highest percentage of people who have never used the internet today, or at least for uh, based on the DESI index of 2020? Thirty-five point three, twenty-four point five, or lower. Well, I would have voted thirty-five point three myself, but what we can see from last year's index is that actually this percentage, which was rated 35.3 two years ago, now decreased of 10 percentage points. So probably uh, you can guess why the COVID pandemic has actually impacted in a very, very uh, meaningful and transversal way in the use of the internet. Attention, this doesn't mean that people have the minimum basic digital skills to use the internet though, because it was too fast. It was too, uh, uh, well, without any uh, time to really structure uh, learning interventions in order to make sure that, for example, uh, younger and older generation are aware about cybersecurity and uh, all the threats and risks that you have by surfing the internet. So we should react quickly and we should, in a way, take advantage of this uh, situation where people who maybe two years ago 
uh, were facing a lot of uh, barriers in using the internet or maybe just personally have very strong level of resistance in using the internet they are now used to the to the tool and to the um, uh, to the virtual environment but still they do not have the basic competencies to use it in a proper way this is what we do with uh, all digital um, all digital is a uh, uh, european uh, ngos based in Brussels, and I'm glad to share with you today a uh, good news from yesterday that I've just been elected as the chair of the board of All Digital for the next two years. And um, what we do, we represent first of all uh, 25,000 digital competence centers from all over Europe, and we take care of a 42 percent of European citizens who do not have enough digital skills, those level, those set of basic digital skills that I was referring to in the previous slides. Today's society is changed and there are many transformative uh, um, changes at digital level, a green uh, transition. So Reflecting and, uh, on how to improve the digital profile of European citizens, it's not longer just a matter of teaching softwares and uh, explaining how to use a computer. It's a very more complicated uh, activity. With all digital then, whose mission is to empower uh, the member organization from non-formal but also formal education provider, uh, we try to uh, reach a very extensive scope all over Europe. As you can see, these are uh, all our members. And we do research. So we can consider all digital as a permanent observatory on uh, the gap between the real uh, digital skills of European citizens and the need not only of the market but especially the need of the society and the request of the society. With the digital competencies development system we have actually made a first step in uh, uh, establishing an uh, overall uh, framework that starts from the uh, assessment of basic digital skills of citizens and learners in order to provide support to the educational institutions in uh, uh, designing customized and personalized training path that will really support a single individual in developing the uh, needed competencies in the digital field. The research has been uh, conducted uh, within the framework of the European Digital Competence Framework, DigiCom, which sets these five areas of uh, competencies, uh, divided in in uh, 21 sub competencies so um, what we wanted to do was to really uh, provide a set of tools and platforms that could be easily transferred in any european country following a uh, european framework this is an example of the platform that we are using and that now in, the, uh, in many European countries, starting from Italy and Greece, uh, the, uh, digital, the National Digital uh, Coalition for Skills and Jobs are uh, adapting to their needs. And I will share also uh, the link for you to, to surf it. And why we uh, developed such a platform? 
because we understood that uh, what uh, is one of the basis of the uh, adult education learning uh, applies at the maximum level for digital skills. Interest on learning something that will change the life of the adult is probably the only way to break the barrier towards the digital uh, uh, the digital gap. So let's interact again and uh, let's see on uh, what, uh, on your opinion which of these factors impact most on individuals' levels of digital competence. You can choose, if I'm not wrong, um, two or three um, elements. Probably there are there is some problem because I see you are voting, uh, but the results are not uh, shown by the platform. But anyway, you can see here the, the choices were level of education, age, employment status, gender, geographical location, and civil condition. So you know what you have voted. Sorry for this technical problem. Let's see what we found out with our research. Education is the first uh, factor that impact on the level of uh, digital uh, literacy. Of course, low skilled people, generally speaking, are also those who have less digital competences. But uh, it, this is not the only one and what we explored and understood by uh, actually interviewing uh, millions of users from the 25,000 digital competence centers of our network is that employment and especially the uh, unemployment personal situation affect and impact a lot on the level of digital skills. In fact, although one would think that being unemployed today would increase the interest of adult people to increase their digital profile, actually, the feeling is the opposite. If I, have, if I am even over 40 years old or over 45 years old and I end up being employed, unemployed, then the uh, feeling towards the digital transformation becomes so um, hard that it will be very difficult to uh, convince people to upgrade their digital profile. Finally, age is another important level uh, and factor to consider and of course seniority uh, it's probably the most uh, um, uh, easy to understand uh, factor for uh, digital, uh, for low digital skills. But again, here, what came out from the research was that each age has a different level of low digital skills. It's not just about elderly people, but it's also about new generation that are digital born, but at the same time, they grow up without a, a correct uh, set of digital competencies in many different sectors. So, um, I think I have to speed up a little bit, so I will just go to the results. Uh, these are uh, the uh, reasons why people uh, in the countries interested by the research want to uh, improve their digital profile and uh, we were uh, unique in Italy as you can see uh, from the other five countries answering sense of inadequacy, so not feeling adequate 
to uh, the uh, online progress of the society, the digital progress of the society. So finally, and um, not, I cannot probably go into the detail uh, of the manifesto, uh, with all digital, uh, we decided to uh, produce a document that you can see as a, a reflection on uh, what is what are the most important uh, actions to be undertaken in order to uh, promote at European level uh, an improvement of the digital skills of the European citizens, but in a sustainable equal and um, forward-looking way. Because acting today, trying just to solve the problem that we studied the day before yesterday, it is useless. If we, we are all experts here in education, we work in education, most of us, so you know that if you plan any educational activity, you should do it in a forward-looking way, looking at, 20, 30 years ahead, not to the results of yesterday. This is what you will find in the manifesto, a set of recommendations and also action points to improve and extend in the education and offering. Of course, if the um, needs, the personal needs in the digital domain are really individual based, and the only way, the only strategy that we can implement is offer many different and flexible learning paths to the adult population. Second, ensuring wider access to training and education pathways. No one excluded. Everyone needs to have the possibility to access education in the digital age. And access, it's not just uh, physical, it's especially in this new domain, virtual, and it means new strategies uh, and new partnerships between education and other sectors. Third, raising the level of quality of pathways, of educational pathways, not giving for granted that uh, uh, and, uh, proposing a training that answers specific needs, it's already enough. To do, to really ensure quality, what we suggest is first to uh, refer to European reference frameworks and use all the tools possible that will make recognition between different countries easier. Third, contributing to the development of an homogeneous validation system at European level and with the micro-credential initiative, we think that this will be facilitated, the recognition of digital competences. And I'm going to conclude with the fifth uh, recommendation, which is acting in accordance with principle of sustainable development. What I was saying before, now digital transformation, it's not just the digital world, it's digital impacting the uh, ecology, digital impacting the sustainability and digital impacting all, at least all the 17 goals of the uh, agenda of 2030 of the United Nations. So every time we plan an educational path, we should try to think how these competencies could, of course, improve the personal and professional uh, profile of the people attending the course, but also we should also think about the community and how these competencies will improve the community around us. The last slide, uh, if you want to contribute to the discussion that we carry out and the research that we carry out daily on these topics, these many topics, I invite you to uh, join us. There are at the moment two uh, communities of practices uh, that we carry out jointly with the JRC. And the one is on the adoption of Digicom. So if you're curious about Digicom, how this can be adapted and adopted uh, from your organization, this is the right one. 
And the other community is more on the certification. So everything related to micro-credential certification system of digital competencies uh, in all the educational levels. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, feel free to contact me if you need more information.